Okay, hello and welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is the uh, it is Monday. It is the 11th of March. Uh, it is 2019. It's very nice to see all your faces. Um, if you are here, please put your name on the attendees list in the crook pad. I will put that in the chat just now for you. Um, and if you are here and would like to share with us your weekly update, then please do add it to that same crook pad. Um, a reminder, if, you don't, if you're not usually on this uh, on the JS Core Dev team, but you are on a different working group or team and you would like to share some, uh, uh, some wins or updates, then uh, there's a section for that at the bottom of the document now. Uh, so uh, we can get some updates if you, if you like. Uh, please fill it in. Um, if you've got something to share, you, you are quite welcome and we'll try and get to you uh, should there be time left. Um, cool. All right. So normally uh, we, we ask for a note taker and Volga has um, volunteered this week. Thank you, Volga. Uh, and now what happens is we go through our weekly updates and we tell each other what we did last week, what we're currently blocked on and what we will do this week. So um, let's start at the top of the list. Um, my name is first, so I will, I will give you the rundown. Uh, okay, so me, uh, I did a little bit of helping out debugging the DHT 100% CPU usage uh, stuff, not a lot, but um, Vashko and Jacob have both been helping with that, and um, yeah, things are getting better. Um, uh, so, Hack Diaz uh, has uh, submitted a PR, which I reviewed, to the Go IPFS step to make it better. Uh, I was looking at it anyway because there's a new Go IPFS release out and we need to update that module. Um, but he submitted a PR to so that uh, the versions and the architectures and um, and platform support are no longer hard coded. They come from the disk site, so it, it, it determines what it can be installed by looking at the site that tells you what's available. So that's much better than having a second copy of it in the module. So um, that's good. And there's a release, a pre-release out at the moment, so we can just check that it all works. Um, uh, and hopefully that will be out really soon and we can start using it in, um, in our tests and all of that. Uh, woo, okay, so the types and utilities uh, were previously on the IPFS uh, instance. So you'd have to, if you wanted to use some of the types like a CID or like a, a multi-adder type or, um, or the is IPFS tool, then you had to instantiate an IPFS node or IPFS client uh, before being able to access them. So what I've done is moved those out from the instance and so they're now um, just a uh, thing you can require. Uh, they're just on the IPFS constructor um, as properties on that. So you can grab hold of them without having to create an IPFS node first. So that's kind of much more useful. Um, I added a um, enable, in, enabled, enable preload CLI flag um, for the daemon because I realized that I wanted to do some DHC testing, but in the daemon, there's actually no way of disabling, um, disabling preloading via like the config that gets saved uh, so there's now just a quick flag which will allow us to um to disable preloading so that we can test the dht and that everything's working so that was a kind of requirement for that um i opened a cool oh, open a pr for displaying version right okay so go ipfs has recently started uh, displaying like the version of golang the version of the, of actual Go IPFS uh, and some kind of system architecture and uh, and platform information as well. And so I just quickly opened a PR to do the same with JS daemon. Um, so that's kind of quick and easy thing. Um, so the kind of really cool one is we had a new contributor who, uh, who opened a PR which uh, was solving an issue that Lidl opened, which was um, being able to listen on multiple uh, ports and addresses for um, the API and the gateway. So now instead of uh, listening on just one address, you can listen on multiple if you want. So you can listen to on an IPv4 address and an IPv6 one, uh, which is really cool. So. API and gateway that now is now supported. So hooray and thank you to the contributor. I forget the name. Sorry. Um, 
All right, what else? So, okay, boring stuff. Debug prefixes change from JS IPFS to just IPFS, just normalizing that. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, so I added another example, and I did a whole bunch of interviews last week, so I actually didn't get a lot of time to do any coding last week. So, whew, okay, 035 release is still blocked on getting the DHT um, sorted. Uh, we are a lot, uh, we are making good progress with that. Um, the, I, I now have a node that will actually stay running for um, a long time, which is great. Uh, thanks to the work that Hugo did, fixing up the lock file so it no longer uh, errors when uh, the event loop is hogged. So that's good. We can, we can uh, yeah, <laughs> it hasn't quite been released yet, but uh, it, it, I've tried it out, been trying it out today and it works, so that's good. Um, and uh, Jacob has been doing some investigation and has, be, has identified an issue with peer uh, disconnection events. So uh, basically, the uh, connection manager was not, no, didn't like it. It wasn't getting the. It was getting too many disconnect events, I think, and so it uh, it just it was getting rid of too many peers or something. I don't know. It didn't know how many how many peers they actually were connected, basically. So it wasn't able to manage connections properly. So. We're getting closer. Um, next up, I'm still going to be debugging the, the uh, hopefully solving the 100% CPU issue and helping out with that where I can. Um, and then I wanted to move on to testing DHT after that was solved. I mean, this is kind of part of it. Um, and then if I have time, then more work on the async interactors endeavor uh, and more work towards uh, CIDV1 base 32 encoded stuff. I'm sorry, that was a really long update. Uh, would any, does anyone have any questions? If no questions, then uh, pop next uh, person from the stack. Um, Vashko, you are next. Would you like to share with us your update? Hey all. Uh, so I mostly was working in the lip to interrupt uh, last week as uh, we need to, to get the tests uh, really nearby uh, done. And so most of my time was on that. I created the PR for the DHT interrupt test, uh, which is still blocked uh, now with an issue in the goalie P2P daemon that uh, hopefully will get uh, solved this week. I also added support for PubSub both for JS P2P daemon and uh, also to the client. And I also added support for streams in the daemon client as well. Uh, other than that, I, review, I started reviewed uh, the migration to async PRs from uh, Dirk MC, which I promised him a long time ago, but uh, finally I did some reviews to the Lipid record and the JSIPNS. I started a review for the CAD DHT as well, but it's a really, really big PR and I haven't finished yet. I started with an initial feedback. Uh, then I also did today the, the debug uh, uh, regarding the pub sub issue that uh, Alex uh, reported. Uh, basically, uh, there is a, a limit with the, uh, with the module. There is the full length. Uh, uh, length uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, pool length prefixed. Uh, but uh, we, we need to discuss further because uh, basically Go, Go limits the size of messages to one megabyte while we actually limit uh, because of that module to four megabytes. But uh, uh, Alex is eating more than that, so I need to discuss with him uh, how can we solve that. Then uh, I, I'm blocked, as I said, in the DHT interrupt test because of uh, an issue with the Go uh, with HP daemon. And for this week, I want to, to have more time to help with the DHT tests and the debugging. I also want to finish the review of the gossip sub implementation, which I also started, but I haven't submitted it yet. And uh, also move further with uh, the PRs for the interop that now I will wait for Jacob to review and uh, try to have them all released this week. That's everything for me. Anyone has questions? All right, thank you, Vashka. Uh, okay, if no more questions, no, I mean, no questions, then we have next, uh, we have Alex next. 
Uh, so I addressed uh, all the comments on the Impound Archivist blog post I was writing. Um, one of the things that came up, um, I kind of noticed some unreliability in the service. I was looking into uh, looking into that, and I found some like errors appearing in the logs that were kind of weird. Like you would um, write something to MFS and then try and read it out. And it wouldn't be there. Um, and I thought maybe it was something to do with S3 because when you push uh, things into S3, then you know if you do a read immediately, you might not get the thing that you just pushed. But I think it depends which region you're in. You know, that turned out to be a red herring. Um, turns out that there there's some weirdness with uh, sort of deeply nested ham shards um, and, and like updating the shards. So the, the importer is fine, it's just when you uh, when you update it yourself. Um, so I looked into it and it turned out that there are some extra nodes getting added, like intermediate nodes in the ham shard, uh, which causes problems when you try and read it back because the structure is not predictable, uh, which is super tedious. Um, so I've so I uncovered that and now I have a fix locally for it. Um, I'm going to expand the uh, interrupt tests to do more stuff around the hand. Um, it's beyond tedious trying to debug this because you want to try and create a minimal structure in a hand shard that, uh, exp that you, know, you can express the problem with. Um, but the problem is that everything is prefixed with a number and a number is based on hashing the file name. And in order to create the structure you want, you need to be able to predict what file names will re result in which hashes, which is kind of a hard problem with hashing because it's supposed to not go in that direction. Um, anyway, so it's just a case of like running things forever until you generate basically like a rainbow table kind of thing that you can then use to construct a, a, you know, the, the structure that you're trying to get. So that was beyond tedious. Uh, anyway, so I, yeah, like I said, I have to fix. Uh, so that is cool. I'm going to get the that PR in uh, later, like maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow. Um, I also helped out uh, Volker with some fairly epic bike shedding on the IPLD API. Um, hopefully, we we can ship something there soon. That would be lovely. Draw a line under it, and then you know more comments can go for the next round of changes. Uh, also did a whole bunch of interviews, um, cool stuff. That I think is me uh, next week. I'm going, well this week I'm going to yeah, finish that PR and then hopefully get on to the adding the missing features to JS IPFS. Any questions? Silence is compliance. Uh, I have a question about the, <laughs> I have a question about the you said that actually generating the data was really tedious. Is that did you come up with any like a, a way of doing it, or is it literally just that the only way is to just uh, run run stuff until something comes out that is what you want, um, or is, is there some sort of tool we can make to make it easier in the future? I didn't come up with a good way of doing it. No, just brute force. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, if there's no other questions, um, we've got, thank you, Alex, and we've got Volker next. Please, would you like to share with us your update? So I actually wonder what I did l l last week because I don't have that many, many items. Um, but So I, I did prepare my talk for next week, um, and I had those discussions that Alex was already mentioning about the new JS um, IPLD API. And as I'm on the conference this week, um, so if anyone has comments on the JS um, IPLD API, it's uh, linked here. So please leave your comments because next week I really want to make the call and then, yeah, we go with something. I currently am towards making a get and get a mini version. So basically having a single item version and a multiple items version. But I want to play with it a bit and, and we'll see how this if that's good to use. Um, yeah, and next week I will attend a conference, a geo conference in Germany, and spread the word about IPFS and IPLD. And that's all I have.
Okay, cool. Thank you, Volker. Any questions for Volker while we're here? Alex? What else do we need to do on the IPLD API to ship it? Uh, just make a decision, and that's probably me who should make the decision <laughs> as the IPLD tag lead. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, so I, I just missing, oh, want to spend a bit more time seeing if I, I if I redo the get single version and get mini version. I think it makes sense. So basically, okay. So to me, I think doing the get single and get many makes sense because then everyone is happy. And the API isn't too bad if you have basically a consistent version of, if you have many, you just add many to the API. So it's still quite simple. I think that's um, a good way to move forward. Um, yeah. Cool. Get there. <laughs> I'm going to take another look as well. So okay. I don't know if I should. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As long as you don't have any comment. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I'll, I'll have opinions. I can't help it. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, Volker. Um, next up is Hugo, Mr. Diaz. Hey, guys. Uh, so what I've been doing, uh, I took a, a look into the Product School stuff. Uh, they had an um, uh, issue with... Uh, with a view webpack build. Basically, Oli found out like a workaround to fix the issue. Uh, basically, the node wasn't starting, uh, but the workaround is kind of ugly, uh, even though it works. So I took a look uh, out, can we, could we uh, fix it properly? Basically, we just need to run IPFS uh, through the um, bubble, um, through bubble, uh, it's a really easy fix. Uh, it, it was just a matter of understanding what how Vue CLI works. Um, I will do a pull request to fix that issue and probably uh, make some issues with uh, some suggestions, especially the browser list uh, setup they have, which. Um, is probably making the their bundle like huge, and by losing like one percent support for like browsers, they can reduce a lot in the bundle because right now they are supporting like BlackBerry browsers and stuff like that. Um, I also fixed the uh, uh, the log file uh, issue that we've been having. Regarding like uh, sleeping issues and event node event loop, like being too busy to handle all the, uh, the stuff the the our nodes need to do, um, that should be fixed. Uh, Alan took a look at, into it, and uh, I think now I should like just release and make the pull requests, uh, and also. Uh, looked into adding a Windows testing to lib P2P, which uh, has been a problem uh, because uh, like Travis just doesn't work and I cannot find out why or fix it. So basically what I try to do is uh, use um, Azure pipelines uh, doing just a simple ad hoc setup for uh, lib P2P just to run Windows, nothing else. Everything else runs uh, as, uh, as it runs right now on Travis, just so, so they can run the tests on Windows. Um, this is not like actually running yet because the permissions and stuff is weird. I've been talking with Raul to set up this stuff and probably today we will get that sorted out and that should be um, good to go. Uh, so for next week, I'll make the my stream HTTP fork into a proper package so we can include it on HTTP clients, uh, and we'll work on as I, as I already talked about uh, the protocol PR and async iterators for the rest of uh, for the rest of the week. Anyone has any questions? Thank you for looking at protocol. No problem. 
Alan? I have a question. How do you feel about submitting a PR to JSIPFS, adding an example for view? Is that worth it? Um, there are quite a lot of view users, so it would be nice to have like a, this is how you view with IPFS. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, uh, I'll do that. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to like do a quick share so you actually understand what's the... <laughs> Uh, mm, I... So, the fix, can you see my code? Can you yes. see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's just like this on the view config. So, yeah, I'll do a pull request setting an example. Yeah, I think it's just like, I, I, yeah, I appreciate that that's super small, but just having something that people can copy and paste yeah. is, is just really useful for people. Um, Actually, there's, um, this basically fix the, fixes the issue that Ollie found, but right now we have another issue, which has to do with sometimes we use set immediate without requiring, requiring the package because we are used to like webpack uh, including the polyfill, but the view webpack config, it's weird and does not include it. So we, we need to like fix. Uh, yeah, when I found out about switch, we probably doing it in other places. Yeah, we, we need to fix that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I had no clue where all the set immediate error things were coming from when they were appearing. So I totally lucked out that Ollie figured that out for me. Right. Okay. Yeah, we need to fix that. Um, cool. All right. Uh, thank you, Hugo. Um, I have no, wait. Do I have another question? Oh yeah. So uh, the bundling, the bundling. PRs, um, I would really like to get them into 035 and we're getting closer with the DHT. Um, if you get the stream HTTP into its own package, what is the diff what is the kind of delta between us getting, like after that's released, to getting JS IBFS, the PR on JS IBFS merged? Ooh, we need libp to release. And uh, it should be it should be it should be straightforward from there. The P2P should be able to be released. They, yeah. Well, I was talking to Vashko and Jacob last week, and they said they'd do it. They could do it this week. So um, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Zane. Cool. Um, hey. Nothing much. I was actually kind of busy with other things this week, um, but um, fix the JS data store file system PR, um, but I'm kind of hitting issues with CI. Um, just need to like start Travis CI in that repo, but I'm not sure exactly all the bits and bobbins they need to put in place. Um, JS data store core, uh, it's failing the browser test for CI, but passing locally. So again, I just kind of need to either replicate the sort of like whole karma roll, running stack and then like sort of test that and figure out what's going wrong there uh and pretty much so it's the same as last week but this week i'm gonna actually do it which is just like um fixing the various prs i have outstanding cool um the, so the ci travis ci support is probably worth like sent uh, sending a separate pr for sorting that out um and uh on the azure readme hugo has documented everything you need to do to get it set up um so if you're interested in also helping out with that then that would be rad uh, yeah but yeah if you can send a separate pr and and like like hugo just mentioned in the chat just mention him um and he can hopefully help you take it over the line okay cool, cool. All right, we're at the end of the, the list. Is there any other questions for Zane before we move on? Cool, thank you. Um, all right, cross-team updates, let's go. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Lidl, you're up first. Hi. Hi, uh, like very, very quick update is that uh, 
our gateway on the DWebLink uh, domain uh, supports HTTPS, so you sort of can start using it today, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and uh, another, also related to um, move to the Bears32 CID version one, is that I created a bears, bird's eye view of all the ongoing and already closed uh, PRs related to the effort across both Go and JS uh, entire ecosystems. And I sort of tried to at least make some sort of a sense and uh, separate them in different uh, milestones, sort of. Uh, so it's a work in progress. Uh, if you are working on that or have worked in the past, uh, just glance at it. If something looks off, uh, fix it or let me know <laughs> and I'll update it. If anything is missing and should be added there, or if you feel we should change the way we, we are tracking this, if there should be like a separate milestone um, that should be coordinated across the teams, uh, it also should be reflected there. Uh, just just putting it there on the map, and that's all on my end. Awesome, thank you, Lido. That's a really super, super helpful issue. I saw that earlier. Um, cool. Moving straight on. Uh, any questions for uh, Lido quickly? Sorry. <laughs> okay, I know we're over. Terry, would you like to um, give us your update? Yes. Please? Yes. So my biggest request for this group is that I am working on a roadmap for Proto School, and I would love your help thinking about what content, either uh, content, tutorials, etc., or uh, features are necessary in Proto School in order to help us meet the educational needs that you have for your project. Um, so what's next up in IPFS? What are the things that people are having trouble understanding how to do where the format that we have would be useful? So I've left a link there to an issue where you can comment on that. Um, and that could include workshops that make sense for IPFS camp. It could include stuff that's totally different. Um, and then there are just links here if anyone's interested in seeing more about the direction I'm going in with the files API tutorial, you can find links to the PR that's in progress and the issue there. Cool, thank you, Terry. Uh, any questions? All right, uh, and then Molly has had to run to the Go IPFS weekly uh, meetup, but uh, what she says, Go IPFS team has started using Circle CI. Fair enough, but Go IPFS repo and really liking it so far. Yeah, nice. Uh, I think Jenkins has been terminated. <laughs> uh, so that's great. Tentatively plan to slowly roll out this opportunity to other Go IPFS ecosystem repos. Cool. Uh, that's that's good news. Um, we we are feeling better on our CI front. I hope everyone like I've certainly been having less issues getting CI to actually pass for JS IPFS. Like I just leave it and then it. It, it passes and then on the occasional event that it doesn't pass I can restart just the one I want to restart and it works and that's super rad. So no, I'm very happy. Um, I know Windows is a bit slow, but hopefully hopefully Travis will sort that out and if not we'll move to circle um, But yeah, maybe Thank you all for joining us uh, for this uh, for this round of updates this week. It's been super fun and um, I will oh wait, so I have a note. Oh, sorry Okay, Vashko is partially unavailable next week. Blah, blah, blah. VMX not available from Tuesday to Saturday. He's going to the conference, like he said. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Uh, really nice to see you and see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.